rounding to the nearest. All right, we're going to do this systematically. We're going to do near thousands, and then we'll try hundreds, and we'll try whole numbers, and then we'll try cents. So with thousands, what you want to do is remember our little trick. If you write a thousand for every zero, there is a decimal place. So the thousands place would be the third one in. So if we count one, two, three, that's the thousands. You so you want to underline it, circle the number to the right, and then that is our test digit, just like before. So if that test digit is four or more, four or less, sorry, four or less, then what we're going to do is keep it the same. Well, at that number four will stay a four. If that three is five or more, then we're going to increase the four to a five. So it is a three, which is four or less. So same, that's what we get. So that stays a four. And what we do now, since these are all decimals, you don't have to worry about converting to zeros. You just throw them away. Everything to the right, throw away. And everything to the left, you want to keep. So we have to keep the six, the five, the three, the two, the one, the four, the three, and the two. And that is fully rounded to the nearest thousands. Okay? So let's try one more, number two. You want to underline the four, circle the five. Now that's a five or more, which means we increase the four to a five, and we keep everything to the left, throw everything to the right away. All right, I want you to try number three and four. Actually, let's do three because it is special. So again, we count in three because we are thousands. Now if there's nothing to the right, that means this has already been rounded. It, everything to the right has been thrown away, so it's finished as fully rounded. Okay, I want you to hit pause and try number four. <laughs> All right, so you should have gotten 1.235. So one and 235 thousands, and that's why we're rounding to the nearest thousands. That's the last number we say. All right, hundreds. So hundreds, if you write a hundred, how many zeros? Two. So we go into zeros, or two decimal places, and then we circle our test digit. That one is four or less, so that means we stay the same. Throw everything to the right away. Keep everything to the left. Even the test digit disappears. And then there is our answer. All right, try numbers two, three, and four. Hit pause now. And these are the answers you should have gotten. Perfect. All right, so now let's try rounding to the nearest whole number. Well, the whole number, whenever you have decimals, it's whole number, whole part, decimal part. So that means if you want just the nearest whole number, that means we're trying to get rid of the decimal. So you come over here and you underline the very first whole number we have, which is three. And that means we put the test digit as the decimal. Okay, so it's a five or more, so that means a three becomes a four. And then now if you notice now, there are no more decimals because we wanted to throw it away. So that's why we had to start on the very first whole part. All right, so try the numbers two, three, and four. Hit pause now and try them. So those are the three answers you should have gotten. Zero, 1,009, and one. All right, last thing for today. These are rounding the nearest cent. So whenever you're dealing with money, if you had $3.45, that is your cent. These are your dimes, and these are your dollars. So if it says round to the nearest dollar, you would round to the nearest whole part, the ones place. If it says round to the nearest dime, you round to the tenths place. Round to the nearest cent, that's the hundreds. So you have to locate the hundreds, our penny location. Circle the number to the right. And again, that's four or less, so that stays a six, a five, three, two, one, four, three, two. And you gotta put money on there. I don't think I put money on the ones above, did I? Oh good, because they were all whole numbers. <laughs> all right, so try numbers two, three, and four. Hit pause now. And then there are your answers. You can kind of see the, the importance of this because we deal with money all the time. So if you end up with 
a decimal after doing a division or a multiplication and you're dealing with money, you want to make sure it stays as money. So you have to round it. Thank you.